Sorry about that, folks. You will actually have a two-parter for part one today because I hit the wrong button. Continuing with our idiot in court. But, but ma'am, guess who has the burden of going to the right place? You've heard me talk all day that the plaintiff has the burden of, of proof and, the, and, the, and persuasion. The plaintiff also has the burden of going to the right court. Exactly. The lawsuit that Amber intends on losing should have been filed in circuit court, not district court. Now, I see libel, slander, defamation. You, you said that he filed some kind of false criminal charge against you? Yes, he did, sir. Yes, he did. Was the case, was the case dismissed? No, it wasn't. I ended up going to the county jail for 27 days. They gave me two years probation. I had to pay filing fees. So wait a minute. I almost hit the wrong button again, so I gotta cut that out. But wait a minute. You're claiming that he filed a wrongful suit against you, yet you settled by going to jail for a week. Going two years on probation, yet it, he's claim, you're claiming that it's a wrongful suit by him. Damn, you're dumb. So, you were, so, so what you're telling me is you were convicted. That's what I'm telling you. And I want to be reimbursed for the probation fees and everything and having to find somewhere else to move because that was my home I got kicked out of because he lied on me. Ma'am, 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 he didn't lie on you if you went to a judge, had a trial, and was convicted. That's not lying. You lost. That means you were in the wrong. Sir, you got, sir. You got, did you have a trial? Did you have a trial? Sir, what are you talking about? I went before a judge. What you talking Judge Bailey, Haley, whatever her name is. This is literally the one time that this Chad is about to interject in the entire trial, but it's the only thing that he needs to say. You honestly yeah, yeah. She, she, she pled guilty. I did not pull, I did not plead guilty to pulling the knife on you. I did not plead guilty to pulling the knife on him, Judge Marable. No, did I didn't. You enter, did, you, did you enter a guilty plea? Not on pulling a knife on him. I entered a guilty plea on a domestic violence charge which was the lesser charge of the, the claim that I pulled the knife in here. So, oh, yes, Amber, you, you precious did window that. Liquor. I don't think you completely understand what it means to plead to a reduced charge. It's very similar to as if I was charged with driving with a suspended license, but I pled down to allowing someone with a suspended license to drive my car, that person being me. But that still doesn't mean I wasn't driving with a suspended license. Just like you pleading down doesn't mean you didn't try to cut off Chad's Richard with a knife. I have the transcript. Why did over 200,000 transcripts right here, which what I brought to court to show you? It is not pleading guilty to pulling a knife on him because I would not have done anything like that. Only way I would have done that. What, if he was a what charge did you? What? What charge did you plead to, ma'am? I told you, sir, a domestic violence for uh, six words that I said to him when he said you can't okay. fight, and I said you really don't want me to, and the judge felt that that was threatening, and she felt me guilty of that, but not pulling a knife on him. I was originally let charged. Me ask you, with let me a ask knife you. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this, ma'am. Let me ask you this question. Did you plead uh, pursuant to a plea bargain that was offered by the prosecutor? Yes, sir. In other words, they would dismiss the higher charge if you pled to the misdemeanor. Yes, I know. Well, that, is that what happened? That's what happened. Well, I, ma'am, I, I don't know. Let me it say was, this. It was because of his lies that I was in the county jail for 27 days. I lost my home because of that lie. And I had to rent hotel rooms by the week or by the month because of that. And I want to be reimbursed for that because of that lie he told on me while he was on parole. 
That was a flat out okay, lie. Well, I'm not a criminal like that. Ma'am, no, what? Here's where we're at. I'm going to tell you where we're at. This is the kind of case that has to go to circuit. All right. I'm you, on my if way. If you want to refile it in circuit to get that to relief for libel slander, I, yeah. I guess you could do that. There are court of equity, so you could do that. They have equitable powers. I, I deal with contract sorts of claims and such. I will, okay? I will do that. So, I will do exactly that. So that's the, ma'am, are you talking? Let me talk. I am. So I that's where you'd that. have to go with that type of, that's where you'd have to go with that type of claim. But I'm going to tell you, you know, just a word to the wise, if you pled guilty to some sort of assault, was he the name victim in the I domestic assault? To, I didn't plead guilty to an assault, sir. I pled guilty to six words that I said to him during an argument. Okay, ma'am, you said the charge you, you pled to was domestic. Yeah, domestic violence because of six words that I said to him. That the was judge he the name? Was he? Was he named as the victim in the domestic violence case? Uh, you know he was. Oh God. I just realized they're both named Wilson. I really hope they're not still married and living together, or this is going to be an awkward dinner at Waffle House. Mr. Wilson! I don't know where you're going to go with this. Okay, well, I did 27 days in the county jail because of his lie. The original lie, the original charge was pulling the knife on him, which was a felony. It's not a lie, dear, when you pled to it in court. He could have got me four years in prison. Of course I'm going to cop to a plea. Of course I am, because I didn't pull the knife on him. I did not. Ma'am, so ma'am. 27 days. I've got a copy. I've got a copy of the Register of Actions. It says that you got, actually, you got sentenced. Let me add it up here. I'm going to walk down to the circuit court so I can file it against him. Now, he ain't getting away. With 90, you got sentenced to 93 days. They held 66 days in, a, in abeyance. And you and your point is, sir, that was from the domestic violence. That was from well, the domestic you, violence. It, it was so not. The point is, you got off scot free, no basically. It was a guilty plea. For. Six words that I said to him during an argument, not for pulling the knife on him, Judge Marable. I well, would have been in the judge, by... the judge sentenced you to 93 days. For domestic violence, for six words that I said right. to him during an argument. Right. Not for pulling the knife on him. Pulling the knife on him got me 27 days in the county jail. I didn't deserve that. Here, let me explain it in a way even the cave amber can understand. 27 days that you're talking about are the 27 days that you spend in jail between the day you got arrested and the day you got released. During that time, they decided to reduce your four-year felony down to a 93-day misdemeanor. You were sentenced to 93 days, 27 of them were already time served, with 66 of them held in advance. So you didn't spend 27 days in jail because Chad lied. You spent 27 days in jail because Chad needed a break and he didn't want to bond your ass out. I did not deserve that. Well, you had 21 days to appeal your, your sentence. I did not know that. I did well, not know I that. I can't help you on that. I can't help you on that. Okay. Okay, Miss Wilson. Yes, sir. Can I help you on libel and slam? Yes. Court, this district court doesn't have equitable powers on that. Okay. Aspect. Okay. All right. So I'm going to dismiss it without prejudice. If you want to file in circuit. But I don't think it's going to go that far because you pled guilty. You had to put facts on the record as to why you were pleading guilty. Okay. I'll, 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 because I said six words to him that the judge thought was threatening. That's why. I didn't, put, I didn't plead guilty to pulling the knife on him. That's the difference. That's the difference, sir. That's the difference.
Well, you have the ability to appeal your sentence, too. Thank you. Yeah, I know you I do. I that. Well, let me help you out a little bit here, Amber, because typically you're not allowed to appeal when you plead down to a lesser charge. And in instances where you are, the appeals process will take place on the original four-year felony charge, which in your situation is a really bad idea. It happened in 20... This happened this year, didn't it? It happened in 2020. It happened in 2020. You got a lawyer? The you had a lawyer, didn't you? Yes, and he didn't advise me that I can appeal. He did not. Well, that, okay. He did not. Because had he done so, I would have done it. Ma'am, I think, yes. okay. Yes, Judge well, I dismissed it, and I've explained to you, I dismissed it, I explained to you the legal reasons for why. So all I can do is wish the two. All I can do is wish you, you guys, uh, you know, good luck in the future. Yeah, I don't need luck, and are... God don't answer wishes. God answers prayers. So thank you very much, Judge Marable, and you have a blessed day. Well, if I were you, I'd stop asking God to help you win frivolous lawsuits and start asking God to help science develop a crazy pill, because that is what you need. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. If you want to see the full uncut version, you should head over to Old Squishy Gardener's channel and check it out. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. But don't forget Okay, today is June 1st. Please say your name and spell it. I'm God. G O. Yeah, I know some people consider me God, but you don't need to spell it that way. Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, we have the only thing better than one crazy Karen in court, and that's two crazy Karens in court. So let's begin. Now the first part of this video is going to be kind of slow, as the lawyers for each of the Karens make their arguments. But I promise you do not want to miss the conclusion. Mr. Howard's present. Ms. Pinkston, can you sit somewhere other than your bed, please? Pardon me? Can you please sit somewhere else other than your bed? Can I sit where? Somewhere other than your bed. And so now you indicated that he he kicked your your door. Is that your driver's side door? No, the passenger side. Everything was done on the passenger mm -hmm. side. And was that the front passenger for front passenger door or the rear passenger door? The front, on the side, right there on the uh, passenger door side. Did he kick or strike any other portion of your vehicle at all? The window on the same side, and he jarred the door handle several times. He pounded on the glass several times before he kicked the door. He intentionally did it, did it deliberately. Okay. And was the only damage done by Mr. Um, uh, Howard with regard to your vehicle, the, 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 front, the front passenger door? Yeah, everything that he previous done before that, before he kicked it, yes. And I had no damages to my vehicle before he did what he did. Now, lately I've been watching a lot of the 27th District Wyandotte Court, and this prosecutor is normally great. However, being the legal acumenist that I am, I believe the prosecutor just screwed over his client by specifically asking her if all the damage that he did occurred to the door. This will play a role later. Now you went. You indicated that you went to the uh, Feldman uh, Chevrolet in Livonia and got an estimate for the repairs. Is that right? Correct. Now there were some uh, in the estimate that you provided to, to to the court. There were some repairs that were indicated in the report that included the rear door and and the fender. Um, well, I, that, like I said, I'm not, I'm not an auto body mechanic. All I know is what the damage. Ms. Vincent, please let Mr. Kizak finish the question before you start answering, because our, my court recorder can't take two things out at the same time. Okay, so please let him finish the question before you start answering. God damn, Karen! Your lips are pursed together tighter than a giraffe's asshole. 
and 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 so do you know what those uh, the fender and the rear door repairs were specifically for with regard to damage um, were specifically for or not? From my estimate and from my knowledge, they had to take the whole the whole door panel off and replace all of that from the damage that he did. And you you've indicated that you had no other damage to your vehicle prior to Mr. Um, Mr. Howard uh, kicking in your door. Is that right? That is absolutely 100% correct. Uh, Your Honor, I don't have any further questions this time. Again, this prosecutor is a really good prosecutor, and I don't want to take anything away from him, but I really felt like he left a lot of meat on the bone by not having his client expand on how damage could occur to the rest of the car by a simple kick to the door. Just, just, just for clarification, what, uh, what door did uh, Mr. Howard kick? It was the front passenger door. And how many times did he kick the door? He only kicked the door once. Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, we have the only... Thank you, Dad. My apologies, gang. The video stopped. Give me one second. And he ajarred the, the window and the door handle. Correct, but he just kicked the front passenger door. That was the only place he kicked? Yes, with a strong, heavy kick. No, no other questions, Coach. So I think that all my criticisms about the prosecutor were also picked up by the defense attorney as well because he just took that opportunity to pigeonhole her into saying that all the damage that ever occurred to the car just occurred to the door. And as you'll see, the judge agrees. Well, what we had adjourned this matter for was so somebody from the dealership would come in to testify because um, number one, as related to the invoice, there's stuff on here regarding a fender, and whatnot, but there hasn't been any testimony regarding any damage to the fender. And so I don't know why that would have been put in, pushed, why that would have been repaired. And I really would like to know from the repair individual how a kick would cause the door to not close all the way when the kick was in the middle of the door. Well, can I answer that? He ajarred my door handle previous before he kicked the door. I, I, he see, on my door I see the door handle, but I'm wondering for with the door itself, are you indicating the door handle will not, because the door handle stuck out, it will not permit the door to close all the way. I'm not an auto body mechanic. I have no idea. And herein lies the problem. You're not an expert in that field, so you can't testify as to how the one kick to the side of the door can cause damage to the rest of the car. Now, that's not to say that that can't happen, but it is the court's job and duty to ensure that everyone gets a fair trial, both the plaintiff and the defendant. Because I don't have any evidence before this court regarding the rear door there hasn't been any testimony regarding the rear door. You know, have anything from the, um, or the fender. From the, what? Or the fender as well. Correct. Or the fender. And we don't have anything from the um, body shop people. They're not here to testify. And um, <laughs> so the court's going to indicate restitution the amount of $1,241.75. Well, I want to file a motion because it's not fair. It's not fair at all. Now, I can kind of agree and sympathize with her here. Court isn't always fair for one person or the other. See, that's not the role of the court. 
The court is supposed to be impartial and make sure that it's fair for everyone. It not only has to be fair for the plaintiff, but it also has to be fair for the defendant because he's already admitted his guilt. He already realizes that he has to pay restitution, but you simply cannot make up a number that he has to pay because reason. Definitely true. Fairness is one thing. Trying to stick it to the man or woman is completely different. You break a five dollar phone, you can say, now you gotta pay eight million dollars for that five dollar phone. No, it's five dollars. You pay five dollars. He kicked my door out of rage. Miss Pinkston, Miss Pinkston, your testimony, as well as your statement that's in the police report, as well as the estimate that's put forth, shows the amount that was caused. The amount that was charged for the right passenger door. There wasn't any testimony about anything with the fender nor the rear door. This court cannot order restitution on the fender or the rear door without having any evidence that that was caused by Mr. Howard. Mr. Kazak subpoenaed the body shop person, they did not appear. I cannot assume what that person is going to say. I need to have it on the record for evidence. And that's what I need to base my ruling on. Well, I, I, I want an, another court date because this is not fair. Now, I happen to agree with the judge in this case. And I also happen to agree with Cassandra. It's not fair. So file your appeal and this time make sure the body shop sends a representative. I have to come out of my pocket for some here 10 doing maliciously. Let no one, I mean, this is preposterous. Just keep yeah. going through all this for nothing. Yeah. If you think it's preposterous, you know, actually have your fucking evidence there. So that way we can actually prove it. <laughs> Ms. Pinkston, at this time, this is the court's ruling. If you have some other evidence that would suggest that the additional money is from Mr. Howard's actions, then you can certainly present it to the prosecutor. And I will. But at this point, at this point, what the court has, and I, I adjourned this from April, I believe, so that the um, person can be present and that person is not present. So, therefore, the court's order is restitution in the amount of $1,241.75. Thank you very much. So we're going to be off the record. Keep in mind, Cassandra, off the record does not mean out of court. I think it's time we let the Karens loose. You gonna get yours. Wait, you just said what on the record there? Did you just tell the judge that she's going to get hers? Dude, you know you're still in the courtroom. That's not something you should be saying. Don't make threats. You're in court. I ain't making threats. You are. Karma is something. Karma is something else. Listen. You're still in the courtroom. Shut up. Shut up. But too late, here comes the judge. That's not going to happen. You, you, you can remove yourself from the meeting. Do not make threats. Do not anything. That's not well, acceptable uh, at all. Tell him they'll make threats and quit calling my damn phone. How about you show a little bit of respect and don't tell the judge what to do? Ma'am, you're in court. You need to have appropriate language. Excuse me, Your Honor. <laughs> Can I say yes, something? I, I have, I well, have we're not voice records that you left. I have voice messages that you left. So don't can, play with me. Can, on, don't stop, play with stop. me. Do not, do not address Mr. Me. Howard. Excuse me? Do not me? address Mr. Howard. Yes, Mr. Howard, your attorney is still present. What would you like the court to know? We can go back. We can go back on the record. Back on the record. Yes, Mr. Back Howard. Yes, I would like to put a PPO out on her. 
Okay, Karen number two, why the fuck would you put a PPO out on her when you've already admitted that you did in fact kick the door? You should be counting your blessings that they're not charging you for all of the damages that you probably did cause. Well, this is not the jurisdiction for that. You have to do that with third circuit court. I would be down to the court. And I need to put one out on you. How about that? Listen, ma'am, I said not to address Mr. Howard. Now, this, this is ridiculous. I amended the part that I played, but she never did. You were playing the part. You maliciously take my Okay, let me take back what I just said. Because both of these Karens are fucking crazy. Miss Pinkston! Why that's the enough. Fuck? No, Why Mr. The Howard, that's, that's it. Mr. Howard, Mr. Howard. I understand you 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 pled guilty. I've assessed your restitution. If you feel the need to get a PPO, then you need to take that to the third circuit court. The yes, third circuit court does not have jurisdiction over that. I will. Am I done here? All right. You're all set. Yes, thank you. Off the thank record. You. Have a good day. It's unfair. Karma is something. Karma is something. Karma is something. How about that? Yeah, you're right. Karma is something. Karma might even be the reason why you lost your case, Karen. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. This was just a short Karen and Cord video that I randomly found searching YouTube. So if you All right, with that, we'll have silence for just a moment when we finish this adventure up, and then we'll put the afternoon to bed. Of course, come back for the auditors for auditors, soft sits, and Karens in the evening, and Art Bell in the overnight.